Um, exciting end to the day. Um, you know, getting the players that we got. I'm excited about adding, you know, some more players to our uh, organization that can help us uh, compete and win some football games. Um, that's really all I have to say, Coach. Cool day, fun day. Um, again, continue to enjoy the process. Um, everybody, you know, just working together to try to figure out where we are uh, in this particular point of, of player acquisition. And it, I think at every level, you know, there were there was input from from different people, scouting department, coaches, uh, and then ultimately Rand and I, you know, making decisions that that we felt like helped the football team. For either you, uh, Rand or Mike, uh, you got to pick one, Teresa. You can't just say either. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to start with Rand then. Uh, Rand, the decision to trade up eight spots and go after Will Levis and make him your pick uh, with Ryan under his in, in the last year of his deal uh, is is why move up. And is Levis going to be uh, backing up Ryan, or, or how are you going to play this? Um, so to explain the uh, the move up um, again is what we talked about uh, Monday. What we talked about yesterday is trusting our board, and he was a player that was highly ranked on our board, and we had the opportunity to do so. Uh, so why not do it? It was a chance to improve our football team, and Ryan will start off as our third quarterback, and from there it's on him. The efficiency of the passing game in, in his career, he's not always been the most accurate guy, and uh, he doesn't always seem to have made the, the best decisions. How does that translate here into the coaching that you need to do and into the efficient play that you're looking for? Well, when you look at completion percentage, 65% uh, two years in the SEC, um, what we felt like were, was over 30 drops that probably would have led to you know, closer to 70% completion. Um, every player that we bring in here is going to have a chance to improve and will have to improve. Um, and again, the decision making, you know, toughness, accuracy are obviously things that we, we feel are critical with quarterbacks. And, and we think that the three that we have here are going to be able to do that. Levis being available at 11 and you guys didn't take him, but then trading up to get him, was that just a value perspective? Or like, is that someone that you earmarked as your quarterback in the future? It's a value, value thing. Um, again, he's a player that, you know, had we wanted to choose him at 11, um, we most certainly could have. Uh, like we talked about last night, didn't expect for, you know, Peter to be there. And he was a guy that we, you know, highly coveted. So we were able to make that move. And, you know, happy that we were able to move up, you know, to get a player like Will. So, again, just playing the board. We were just talking on the way here. It's uh, we're playing the board game. We're rolling the dice and playing the board. So that's pretty Peter much. Peter not been there? How, how high was Will at that point on your board? I mean, had Peter not been there, you know, Will was amongst the conversation. So that's really all I can I can give on that right now. I may ask you, I think Rand maybe misspoke, but he said that, uh, I think you said that Will, that Ryan would start off as a three. I know you I meant to say Will. Yeah, I meant to yeah. say Will. Ryan, yeah. Ryan will be the starting quarterback on Monday. Malik will be the backup. Will will be the third quarterback. And, and what I've told them is whatever uh, happens after that will be up to the players. That, that's that's what it's always been here. That's that's what we always want it to be. Good catch, Jim. Competition will yeah. play itself out. Is there a scenario where you keep three quarterbacks of, through the season? Or? Uh, of course. I mean, there's a million scenarios, you know, that we'll have to work through. Um, you know, between me, Ran, and the staff, and myself, and everybody. I mean, that's, you know, we just are starting the off season. We're two weeks into the off season program. Um, looking forward to phase two with with the with the players that come on Monday, and then when we're able to add, get the rookies in here with the rookie mini camp. A lot about player development. How much for Tim and Charles now is is Will uh, kind of the project and, and, and something for for them to, uh, to have a big role in? That 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 would never. Whether it's Will or Tajay or, or Peter, you know, I mean, our coaches again. It's it's ad nauseum. We've been here together for going on six years. You know, they have to be great teachers. They have to, to be able to develop the players at their position, and then they have to be able to make a connection with them and, and hopefully inspire them to do their job better. That, that's what their job is, and they're going to they're gonna put in uh, to each player as much as that player will allow us, and we'll coach them as hard as they'll allow us, uh, and we're excited about the, the three players that we've added 
as well as the, the new players that we added in free agency to, to be able to get to work with them on, on Monday. You mentioned Adam Speed frequently. Um, when you look at this wide receiver group and some of the options available to you, and what's behind not picking the receivers at this point? What's behind it? I mean, just the same thing that Rand discussed, is taking a look at our board and seeing where things are. Uh, we, we know we have needs. We come into each phase of player acquisition with needs. Uh, and it's certainly something that we're going to continue to target. Uh, and again, the, what the roster looks like today and what it's going to look like uh, at the first part of September is, is probably a little different. What can you reasonably expect from a fifth round receiver given the state of your receiving court? I, I right think now? that there's been players throughout the history of the NFL draft that have contributed uh, somewhat. Uh, large success at, at every round. You know, I mean, whatever you say reasonable, I, I don't know what the number is. That's not how we want to approach this. We want to take a look at the board, see where things are, um, try to improve our football team. And, and I am going to speak for myself. I'm confident uh, that we did that tonight. But, but this franchise seems to have diminishing feelings about receivers. You traded A.J. Brown, you drafted Des Fitzpatrick, you played somebody like Cody Hollister last year. Are you dedicated to the passing game with productive players like you've, you've talked about? Yeah, of course. We want to be able to throw the ball efficiently, um, be able to throw the ball down the field, be able to create X plays. And uh, I'm confident that, that we'll continue to try to work on that and we'll, we'll do it. Joe, did you have a question? I have one. Oh, you did? Yeah, Ren, you talk about you know, bringing these QBs in for top 30 visits, getting them in front of you, and really diving into the person that the quarterback is. What did you see in Will when he came into this building that gives you guys confidence in moving up to grab him? Uh, Will's a diligent worker, um, extremely smart, uh, extremely bright, puts a lot of the time in uh, you know, to be a good quarterback. Um, so you appreciate you know, his ability to uh, pick up concepts and things quickly. Um, and just who he is, he's hardwired, you know, he's tough. Um, and his most recent um, offensive coordinator, uh, Rich Gangarello, I had experience with in San Francisco, so kind of knew how he operated within that system. And then when we brought him here, um, you know, our coaches and our scouting staff, we had good interactions with him, so it just, you know, made it easy for us. It's like Mike said, it's, a, it's a, a myriad of things that you can contribute to whatever you feel was a lack of. You know, there were the drops and things like that. So um, we talked about it, uh, about other players. You don't want to just put it all on one person. You have to understand the full concept of everything that was going on. So uh, again, Will's here. Um, our coaches are going to you know, work their asses off to help him improve, and we think that he will improve. I mean, I think, Gentry, I think we, we, we can obviously be transparent. Um, Kentucky was a much different football team in 2021 than what they were in 2022. Um, so yeah, if, we, if we protect him when, when he's out there at whatever point, uh, if we don't protect him better than what it was, it's probably going to look the same, just like it is for every quarterback. So um, we, we try to look at the really good exposures, the great performances. We try to look at them, what they look like at their worst, uh, and, and then just try to get, you know, pull the curtain and, and see what it looks like. But there were some, some really impressive performances against some, some big-time defenses in the SEC. Now there are some decisions that have to be better. You know, we can't put the ball in harm's way. Uh, no matter who our quarterback is. What did you think about Spears' skill set? When this offseason well, was the injuries and making sure that you've got a healthier football team. Uh, Spears has had some knee problems in the past. Are you convinced that his uh, issues are past him? Or he's going to be fine? Play, played a lot of um, really productive snaps. I don't know how many didn't miss much time at all. Um, was a full participant throughout the week at the Senior Bowl. I think both of us are, are comfortable with with where we're at with, with Tajay and, and what his you know availability will be going forward. Now that may change, but you know, feel good about where it is right now. That's where I was going around with you on, on Tajay. Just what stands out about his skill set when you watch him play and how do you feel like he is as a compliment to, to Derek? No, he's a three down runner. 
you know, he can run between the tackles. Uh, he's elusive. He can make guys miss, um, as well as contribute in the passing game. You know, he catches the ball well out of the backfield. He's a good route runner. Uh, just another, um, you know, guy that can do it all, you know, for us. And you can put him in the game in any situation, um, and there, and there be some production there. Um, I just want to say something real quick. Um, you know, today, and as as yesterday, um, these kids are living their dreams, right? Having their name called, you know, realizing a dream and being drafted. And I don't want these you know, interactions between us to always feel like we got to take a negative turn. And, you know, this should be a joyous moment for us to praise these kids. This is a moment these kids are going to see this, you know, and this is a moment for them and their families to rejoice in, you know, because it's only going to happen once. You know, um, we joked, uh, you know, earlier about uh, – Jim and I joked earlier about me not being drafted, you know what I mean? And that's a moment – you know, in my career, I can never get back. Coach was drafted in the third round. That's a moment he'll always remember. So let's let's keep that in mind, you know, when we're talking about these kids and where they've come from and where – because a lot of these kids have overcome a lot, you know, to get to this point, you know. So let's keep that in mind in, in moments like this. There'll be other times to critique what they've done. These kids haven't even stepped on the NFL field yet. You know, so let's let's keep that in mind. This is a, this is a moment for them and their families to uh, have something to be proud of and enjoy this moment circle to the to the wide receiver topic is is the fifth round miracle pick plan the best way to get explosive at wide receiver and to give your quarterbacks dynamic receivers to go with trailing rolling the dice playing the board that's what we're doing um we're going to take the best available player in the um in the fifth round you know we we hope that it's a receiver because we're going to continue to address our needs and if, if the, we take a receiver in the fifth round, it's a player that we feel can contribute to our team. Like Coach said, it's it's players that have come into this league that have performed at high levels in all rounds of the draft. So we don't look at it as a fifth round guy that's not going to be able to come in here and contribute. Everybody that we bring here will have the opportunity to earn it on the grass. You have some receivers that you maybe had eyes on that went about five or six picks before you made that pick at one. Is that a, is there a specific one? <laughs> I knew we were going there. Um, again, it's it's playing the board, you know. Um, you know, there like we talked about yesterday. You know, we're always fielding calls. We're always making calls to try to move around and you know do things to improve our football team. And you know, we gotta um, you know take it as it comes. But we're always looking to improve our football team at every uh, stance we get. Do you ever let need overtake the board at all? We play our board, you know, and like go back to you know yesterday. Um, just so happened at a position of need, a best player was there. And so we were able to do that. So, um, and we're going to continue to do that. You know, again, if, if there was a camera full time in there, you would see the constant communication that we have going on between picks and understanding value and where, you know, different people fall on our board within <clears throat> picks. Um, so it's, um, you know, this isn't, we don't go in locked in in one spot, you know, and, and that's how we're going to be. Bringing Levis in here, you, you get to sit down and work through the interceptions and everything. How did that process go for you guys as far as him being able to explain what happened and uh, what he could have done differently or, or plan some wrong? Great. Had a lot of great exposure with Will, uh, the combine, the pro day here. Um, you know, I think that uh, with any player, you know, when, when, there's, when there's a mistake, you know, one, it's, it's how you allow them to make mistakes. Can they explain it? You know, hey, here's what I was trying to do. It was, you know, fourth down. I'm trying to, you know, feel like I've got to force the ball in there. Uh, and if they can't explain it, well, then that's what you have to come in as a coach and, and figure out, you know, why those things happen. And we did that with, with, with a lot of different situations with, with every quarterback is, you know, whether it was situationally, third down, red zone, interceptions, times where we felt like that was a bad decision. We, we, we did that with with all the quarterbacks that we were that we met with. Obviously, Brian's been through this a lot, you know, in his career, he knows the lay of the land. What kind of message and what kind of, how do you want the league to approach the fact that another quarterback's been brought into the league? That's, that's our job, is to, to bring in competition at every position. That That's not, um, it's not a secret. I, I hope that by now 
that everybody understands that we have to, to prove our value to this football team each and every day. Um, and, and, I, and I've said that to, to every player on our football team, to every coach, and uh, that's, what, that's what our goal is. And they're going to come in and compete, and, and the players ultimately will determine their role. Probably tonight, still some work to do, looking at the board and in the morning, but how, how do you think it stacks up as far as needs that you have now and maybe what's, what's left? I think, uh, you know, Coach said it as we were leaving the draft room, talking to the staff, tomorrow's where the fun begins. You know, tomorrow, uh, you know, and it's still what Coach said, you know, our scouts in the room tomorrow is, is their day. You know, and our coaching staff and our scouts have put in a ton of work. Um, I feel really confident um, in the work that they've done and the players that they've identified um, for us um, as, you know, future picks or future unsigned uh, free agents. So I really feel really good about where we are um, in the process and uh, have the utmost confidence in our coaches and scouts. You, got, you kind of touched on both of you guys followed your own path to the league, you know, like these guys have. What, what advice do you give some of these guys that, that are heading the league for the first time, everything's new, probably overwhelming at first. How do you try to settle, get them to settle in and, and um, get comfortable? For me, it's uh, fairly simple. Um, put your head down and work, you know, and just, you know, eliminate the distractions. And it's, it's really that simple in my mind when you come in and you're young. Um, it's all about putting in the work and learn as much as, as possible and take advantage of the resources, you know. Um, Prior to me coming here, Coach has brought in a lot of resources for these guys, both on and off the field, that are going to make them better people, better players. You know, players not only here but just around the league, you have to just take advantage of those resources, you know, and apply your work ethic to it. If the NFL draft is the best night of their NFL career, they're not going to have a very good career. I'll say him developing into that's that's all on him, you know. I can have all the predictions, all the comparisons, but um, if he doesn't come in and put in the work, which I believe he will, um, then all my predictions will be for not. You know, it's just like I just said: just come in, put your head down, and work. I believe he'll do that. Um, so what he becomes in his career is totally up to him. You talked at the combine though about how important those comps were, and and painting that picture. Who, who's the picture? You tell me, Paul. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm just saying from a, from a standpoint, I'll, I'll say it this way. Our, our comps that we give, you know, are usually within our draft room to kind of paint the picture uh, for us. Um, I think Will Levis is Will Levis, and I think that's the, the best he's going to be is the best Will Levis. So, um, you know, extremely happy for him. Um, had a really cool, you know, conversation with him. You know, as soon as we called, it was, you know, you could hear it. It was, it was really a cool story. He literally had just walked in his home from traveling back from Kansas City. and Bags you know, in the foyer. Yeah, bags in the foyer still hadn't even, you know. And I just kind of told him, um, you know, he was telling me about his travels. I was like, hey, none of that means anything because we're bringing you to Nashville, <laughs> you know. Um, but, you know, to answer your question, you know, I, we can we can say and – Call him everybody, you know, you want to, but I think in the grand scheme of things, you know, he's going to be the best Will Levis. Yeah, I know, Brian, you talked about staying in contact with, with Ryan and communicating with him all the way through. Do you have to even let him know you're going there, or have you communicated with him any since that pick, and how do you want him to approach his job moving forward? I look, Coach, you spoke to Reached him. out to Ryan. Um, those things happen pretty fast. Um, would, would say that was able to, to reach out to him and then ultimately have a conversation with him and uh, explain to him what I told you um, and, and some other things that obviously will be remain between Rand and myself and Ryan um, and expect him to co compete, you know, just like Ryan has done every day since he's been here. And, and what Ryan did was, was come in from another situation put his head down, learn our playbook, and probably a week um, push uh, the starting quarterback in his own way, prove to the football team that he was ready, uh, and then when given the opportunity, uh, took advantage of it. And um, I would expect him to continue to do that and be the uh, consummate pro, compete for his job, 
uh, and I would tell and expect Malik and, and, and Will to do the same thing.